Thank you, man. This morning, go with me to uh, the book of Mark, um, chapter 5. I'm going to read one verse there, and then we're going to head on over to Matthew, chapter 8, verses 28 to 34. So the first scripture is Mark 5, 15. Now here the Bible says, Then they came to Jesus... And saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now jump over to Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two demon possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way and suddenly they cried out saying what have we to do with you jesus you son of god have you come here to torment us before the time now a good way off from them there was a herd of many swine feeding so the demons begged him saying if you cast us out permit permit us to go away into the herd of swine and he said to them go so when they had come out they went into the herd of swine and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fed, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. Let's stop there for a moment. This is a well-known story in the Bible. In fact, it's one of my favorites. It's a story, real briefly, and most of you know it. It's a story of a great deliverance for a man that had been demon-possessed, the Bible says, by a legion of demons. And a legion is like a couple thousand. Can you imagine living with a thousand demons in your soul? The torment that it would cause upon a person. In fact, the Bible says, amen, that no one could even go that way around them because of the attack upon them. They were violent, fierce, evil. They were ugly. Okay. But here in the story, you might be wondering, well, this story is more of a salvation message. It's more of a message about deliverance and God's power. And, and most of you here today you look pretty sane. You're in your right mind. And you don't look like you need too much deliverance. No, no. But there's something here that I read that I had never seen before. And I've been preaching for years and been reading the Bible, obviously, for many years. And the reason I read Mark 5, chapter 15, you know, in that verse, it says that when uh, they came to Jesus, the Bible says that the people seen the one man, okay, had been deeply possessed, that when they see him, he was clothed because... You know, before Jesus came on the scene, he was naked, violent, and and fierce. But the, because of Jesus' mighty deliverance in his life, okay, he was in his right mind. Now we know that's the power of Jesus, amen, over our lives when we come to him. That we find ourselves in our right mind now. In our, in our right heart. In a right position, amen, where we can fulfill God's plan for our lives. And also, amen, take care of our families, our homes. And etc. etc. Okay, so he was in his right mind. Now, like I said, this story has, like I said, a twofold story. I've never seen it before. Okay, you might have. Uh, maybe it passed me by. Maybe I just overlooked it. So, Mark five, it says that they seen the man sitting in his right mind. But if we, if you follow along in Matthew uh, in chapter eight, and we read that that story is about Mark here, Mark five also. Okay, it's the same. It's the same premise, same story, but it's, it's viewed by different authors. Well, in Mark chapter 8, the Bible says that there were two demon-possessed men. I had never seen that. Okay, maybe you did, maybe you're smarter than me. But all these years, I've always preached about the one. And that talks about in, in, the cha in Mark chapter 5. It says that there was one city in his right mind. One, amen, that was... Uh, in the presence of Christ, I said, "Wow, I had never, I have never seen that. Maybe you did, Amen." But it's when Jesus came on the sea of the Gadarenes, 
There were two demon-possessed men that when they seen Jesus on the seashore, they both bowed down and the demons bowed down because they knew Jesus was going to cast them out. Cast those demons out of these individuals, these men. And so the, so the demons uh, cried out to Christ, hey, you know, you know, it's not time for you to deliver us. But we know you're going to, so you know what? Why don't you cast us into those swine, those pigs over there that herd, amen, because we're, we're not ready to, to, to perish. And Jesus obviously goes, okay, I'll let you go to the swine. And you know what happened? The swine, amen, when they were possessed, see, dog, you know, animals get possessed by, by demons, okay? All right? And when they got possessed, the Bible said that they ran violently off the cliff and they died, okay? But today, man, I want to talk about what happened to second dude, huh? Well, you know, it seemed like he just vanished without a trace. Here are two men that were miraculously delivered in a powerful way. Think about it. These men had thousands of demons, a legion, as they, he referred to themselves. We are a legion, thousands, and living in, in this man and in both of them. Oh, I don't know, man. That's, I, I, you know, I had a demon before I got saved, you know, man. It was a demon of drug addiction. And that one was bad enough. Yeah. Can you imagine 1,999 more? <laughs> huh? But what happened to the second man that was miraculously delivered? Hmm? We know, amen, that Jesus came into the world to save sinners, right? Uh, and we know, amen, he has given us life now after we made our life a blunder and a mess, okay? And God, and you can see, amen, I'm sure you do in your heart, amen, that God has delivered us miraculously in a mighty way. Come on. Yeah. We were delivered from all kinds of sin. You know, I don't have to name them. You, you know what you were involved in. You know what type of lifestyle you were involved in. And Jesus comes on the scene. We might have one demon. We might have thousands of them. Amen. But Jesus delivers us and saves us. Amen. And, and you know, and, but you would think, like I said, I've been here 21 years, almost 22 years in Tulare at this church, amen, where I've seen many Many people get delivered from demonic spirits, from drug addiction, alcoholism, from violence, from all kinds of diseases and amen. depressions and, and suicide spirits upon them, amen. They have been healed at this altar in a mighty way. They've been healed in the streets. When we go to the streets, right? Okay. We have this, for you that have been around, we have seen God create miracles in our church. We have seen, like I said, I, I mean, people get saved and most people thought they would never get saved. But, some, but what happened, I've noticed in all these years, and they seem like sometimes they just vanish without any trace. Where are they now? Where are they now? Huh? They're like, they're in church for a month, a week, a year, three years, five years, whatever. I mean, hey, they're, 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 they're allowing Christ even to use them. They're being, you know, the, the plan of God being fulfilled in their lives. They, they are uh, ministering in the church of God. Also, in, in, you know, outside in the, you know, in the streets, in jails where, where we have ministry. And then one, from one day to the next, they just vanish without a trace. I've been telling my message, vanish without a trace. Hmm? <coughs> what happened to this man? And I was like, well, I was reading the same thing again. When I read this, I was like, wait. And... In Mark, it talks about one. In fact, Luke talks about this. Uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they, they talk about the same story. But only in Matthew, it shares that there was another man. So what happened to him? Let's, let's find out. And this is not, like I said, you know, this is for a warning for you and I. Okay. You know, that you and I, they can find ourselves banishing from the things of God if we're not careful. So what happened? Well, maybe he forgot what Jesus did for him. A lot of that going around. We need to remember how Jesus set us free. You know, there's a phrase, and you know what it's called, it says, out of sight, out of mind. You heard that phrase? Amen. And basically what it means is that when you don't see something all the time, eventually it just uh, removes itself from your memory and from your mind. Basically, you're not reminding of it, right? 
We must understand, amen, that when we re remove Jesus from our sight, eventually we remove him from our mind. Eventually we remove him from our heart. Yeah. And we find ourselves vanished into thin air from the things of God. Because we are living in a time when people are forgetting God. Uh, after he has done some great things in our lives, how can you forget the one that set you free, that set me free? The one, amen, that gave us that right mind. Amen. That gave us, amen, that restored relationship with our, with us, our spouse, our, our kids, our family. How can we forget that? Apparently, this man forgot. Oh, and so many times I counsel or I warn or I instruct people, look at, you know, the longer you stay out of church or and you think neglect the things of God, you think, amen, that, you know, the devil is just going to just, you know, you know, leave you alone. You think that, you know, you're strong enough, amen, to handle, amen, the temptation and the schemes, the temptation of the flesh or the schemes of the of the devil. You think you're that smart? We, the Bible, Jesus says oh, that we can do nothing without him. Huh? And, and, I, and I tell them, okay, you know what? But there, people are crazy sometimes. The kind of that we're crazy? Because you know who you are. We know how we can get it. Huh? What's the definition of crazy or insane? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's the definition of crazy. So how people, why do people think, amen, okay, they, they, they can stop serving God for a little bit, and they think they're going to be okay, 99.9% .9 of them go back to some type of sin or they get back and grow so to total sin and you become even worse. That's insane. This is why I do not allow myself to lose remembrance of what God has done in my life. I remind myself daily, okay, when I wake up, I thank God that I actually have a bed to lay on. When I used to wake up in a cold cell, wake up, amen, in a cold alley. Come on. Wake up in a place that, what am I doing here? I remind myself, thank God, I thank Him. But, you know, how many know, amen, that one way to get, uh, to lose sight of that is to become ungrateful for what God has done in your life. Hmm? For you that have kids, how many know, I mean, our, our kids love us and cherish us as long as we give what they want, but all of a sudden, I mean, they become ungrateful. All of a sudden, you're the worst person in the world. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not even my dad. Oh, okay. Huh? Come on. You're the worst mother ever. They hate you all of a sudden. They forget all you did for them. They forget all the money you helped them with. You went without so they can have. Come on. This man began to forget. You know, let me share something. The Bible warns about forgetting God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 19 says, Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Hmm? How do we forget him? Like this man did? Well, first of all, we need to remember... When Sunday comes rolling around, all of a sudden, I've heard people say, well, you know, I didn't know the church today. Oh, <laughs> oh Sunday's going to be the Lord's day, I think, right? The day we come together. Or, why well, oh, man, you know, I forgot this. I, mean, well, I didn't know we are having a gift speaker. Well, I didn't know those prayers that night. But how do we forget? <clears throat> because it's not in your mind. Huh? Or we're good at making excuses of why we cannot be in the house of God. <clears throat> You know what, sometimes we grow, or sometimes even another time that we seem to forget God? Uh, a few moments ago, we picked up an offering, right? Also, we forget about what God has done in our life financially. Come on. Okay. We forgot, amen, when we were praying to God, Lord, if you would open the windows of heaven and give me a job, maybe give me a house. Maybe, you know, a vehicle. Lord, I promise, I vow, and I pledge, amen, to give to you financially. If you open these doors, amen, we plead and we beg God. And what does he do? He opens doors. He opens the windows of heaven. He comes in in a way that, wow, I mean, we're astonished. Huh? But soon, but after a while, as a basket goes by, like, huh. 
We don't have value in no more of those things. Mm -hmm. How can we forget to give, not to give to God? That's all He's done in our life. Now, don't get me wrong. I know sometimes we have memory labs. Oh, man, I forgot to pay my tithe. Maybe get an expected check. And, uh, you know, you're used to paying your tithe off a check. Maybe you can get monthly or weekly, but you get an expected one sometimes. Oh, man. But I, I you know, but I've been doing this for 20, 29 years, and God's always reminded me, boom, pay your tithe off of that. Hello? And I'm not special. Hmm? You know, uh, it just... There's conviction there. But the, the more you do that, guess what? Out of sight, out of mind. We must remember where we got, how we got what we got. Because the Bible says that God is the one that gives us the power for wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17, 18. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth and you shall remember your Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day here the Bible hey, don't get all uh, don't, don't get your chest all pumped up just because you, you think you get yourself just because you think you did this uh, all of a sudden, amen, you just uh, overcame everything and you're the one, amen, that, oh, you, you, you became wealthy, you became, you know, God helped, that it, you know, you did this on your own? No. God's the one that gives you and I wealth. That's right. You know, we got to remember that. Don't forget that, he said. You shall remember the Lord your God, for he is he who gives you power to get wealth. Amen. Come on. Now, I know, amen, sometimes and, and, and when it comes to giving, we struggle a little. I mean, I, I can't say we, I can't lie. I, I had never struggled with giving from the day I got saved. From the moment I gave, got saved, I was so grateful and thankful that I didn't, I, you know what, to me, I owe God my life. Amen. Jesus. He delivered me from drug addiction that ruined almost, took me out. And I, it, was not, it was not difficult to just give to him. And, you know, to me, 10% was nothing. To me, it's more. Right? I was thankful, you know. Uh, you know, God delivered me, in this, and, I, and I don't let myself forget that. Uh, the Bible says, what? To him that is forgiven much, loves much. Uh, you know, that, and that means that you don't forget, you love. When, someone, when you've been forgiven, it's almost like, you know, you, you, you know I'm sure you, you have relationships, and your relationship was at the brink of dissolve, you know, it was about to dissolve. And, you know what, it's going to be a lonely night, lonely year and all that. But God came in and, you know, you're forgiven of your sin. You're forgiven of your foolishness. And you know what, God touched her heart, his heart. And man, you know what, you're forgiven a lot of stupidity. Amen. Right. And your relationship got restored. And you know what, you're, you know, you, it's like, man, it's like you, you're grateful that you love much. You, you, you want to uh, do more for that, for, for the forgiveness. Come on. That you experienced. Right. Yep. So maybe this man just simply forgot. I say I use that word simply lightly. Okay. He 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 got out of sight, out of mind. Okay. He found himself in his soul. He found himself, you know, staying away from Christ and church and things of God. Come on. And before you know it, amen. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15, the Bible says, Amen, there was only one man there. There was only one there ready to do a work for God. There was only one man ready, amen, to fulfill his calling. All right, for the other one, disappeared. He vanished into thin air. Come on. Oh, there's glimpses, amen, throughout our city, amen, of those that used to be, amen, in the capacity of serving God, in, you know, totally. Come on. You see them one here and there. You know, if you have social media, there's glimpses of them on there and what they're doing and all the great things they're involved in. Come on. Who's doing, you know, who they're with, who they're not with, and all that, and, you know. But let me share something. How 90% of social media is nothing but lies. Right? You say amen. Hmm? You know, the thing, the other day, uh, uh, me and my granddaughter, I think it was for Thanksgiving, she, she, uh, we, she did, did, did a selfie with me and her. <laughs> and she got sitting right next to her on the couch. And uh, so she got a camera, you know, the young, you know, young adults do this. You know, this selfie. So, let me see it. 
I said, dang, man, you got a good camera. I look good. I look younger, right? I said, Grandpa, it's got filters. I go, dang, you know what? Put some filters on my phone. I can do it. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but we're off the whole song talking about. What? I can waste it. You never watch it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but there's glimpses of people, like I said, with the social media. You see them at Walmart. You see them over here. You hear about this. Hey, 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 what's the first thing you remember? The first when you see someone that you haven't seen in a while, I guarantee. All right, like you, you think to yourself, man, they haven't been to church. You don't see a whole lot of her hair. Her hair color is different. Uh, he's got skinnier, she's got fatter, he's got taller, or shorter, right? You don't think, the first thing that comes to your mind is like, man, they haven't been in church in, in a while. What have they been doing, right? Out of sight, out of mind, get it? So maybe, man, this individual in our text here, like I said, after Matthew, you don't hear about the second demon possessed man no more. I believe, amen, he just simply forgot. Uh, but how many know it didn't come upon him involuntarily? How many know that we sometimes, uh, what do you call that? Selective memories? Selective hearing. Selective hearing, which becomes selective memory. I don't want to remember. No. You know, David, in the book of Psalms, <laughs> I believe Psalm 122, you know, he said, you know, I was glad when they said to me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. David was actually happy and cheerful that he was able to come to the house of God. Where many, amen, neglected for whatever reason, come on, for many, amen, make excuses of why, and I'm not here to badger you, amen, because you're here, right? But, you know, have you always been here every, you know? Like I said before, and I was giving a problem. If Jose can get over here from Lindsay with 15 kids now, and on time, what is my excuse? What's your excuse? Huh? It takes two car loans. Oh, no, you bought a big car now. You bought a one. You have to come two trips, you have a semi. <laughs> hey. Yeah, he said the bar too high. Mm. Yeah. But what is it? We get selfish on Sunday. In the morning, I'm going to get sleep in because I've been doing all kinds of stuff on Saturday. I've been working all week. Hello? There's no excuse. <coughs> Sometimes I work every day. Whether it's handyman work, whether it's ministry. Back to the day, i got to leave after this. Do something. Okay? But I don't get brownie points. Hey, I, should, I don't make excuses. I know what I got to do, amen. I know spiritually what I got to do in ministry and whether it's my personal responsibilities. But I mean, no, we just somehow, some way, when it comes to things of God, we, we just forget. Hmm. Whether it's witnessing. Uh, when's the last time you were reminded of someone witnessing to you about Jesus Christ and because of that witness, because of them praying for you and following up on you, you find yourself blessed now. But now we're so inundated with too many things that we find ourselves not even mentioning Jesus to anyone in our lives. How do you how do you stay reminded of that? Simply pray in the morning. If you pray. Huh? Lord, put someone in my path that needs to hear about you, someone that needs prayers, someone that needs counsel, uh, someone that needs deliverance. Put someone on path. Use me today at whatever capacity. You can pray that prayer. It doesn't mean that you know you don't go to work, you don't go to school, you don't visit your family, you don't have a day off. But I guarantee you, if you pray that prayer, you'll always be reminded, amen, what Christ did for you because you're telling somebody else what he did for you. Come on. And God never fails to send someone my way. Whether it's a phone call, whether it's literally running into them, whether it's a stranger, I feel the conviction, talk to them, you know, give them a flyer, pray for them, whatever. But let me tell you something. Keep out of the sight of God and His church, and soon you'll be gone 
He, he will be gone from your mind and then your heart. Yeah. Hmm? And we'll, you'll vanish into thin air. Yeah. You remember that uh, movie, The Shawshank Redemption? Shawshank Redemption? Amen. It's a good movie. Huh? Yeah. And uh, you remember when the homeboy escapes uh -huh. and they go into the cell? And they're like, well, where is he? He brings a, his friend, what's his name, Morgan Freeman in. Like, hey, where's he at? I don't know. Huh? And he throws him around. Oh, man, well, man. He, he just vanished in thin air. Remember that statement you made? Hey, like a fart in the wind? Remember you said that? Uh, excuse me, I don't like to say that word, but gas in the wind? Huh? Well, maybe she knows. Remember the uh, poster of Cat Walsh? Remember the old actress? Maybe she knows he pulls a rock and it goes through the poster because he had dug himself out and uh, made a tunnel. Remember that scene? Anybody watch TV? Yeah. Or he's too busy watching Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> Huh? He vanished without a trace. And then sometimes people do that in church. They dig a little tunnel. We don't see the tunnel, amen. They mask and hide something over it, and all of a sudden, poof, they vanish into thin air. Hey, what happened to homeboy? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't even know what happened. Huh? Then they come back, like, oh, Pastor could be back. I go, I didn't know you left. <laughs> come on. Okay, let me move on. Maybe this man that disappeared and vanished, uh, maybe he was just fearful. When I say fearful, you must understand, in that region, okay, one of their main commodities was pig, pigs. Maybe, you know, he thought to himself, okay, man, now that I'm delivered, now that, you know what, I can go to work. This is the only job in this city, is this pig factory. I don't want to be, you know, as, you know, how can I say? I don't want to, and people think that, you know, I'm with Jesus, really. Though I'm thankful he delivered me. But you know what? I need a job. Now that I'm in my right mind, now that I know that, now I, I got clothes back on, and now I'm thinking, you know what? I don't want them to think that I'm associated with Jesus, because they were mad at Jesus, because these pigs, these swine, all right, got killed as they ran over this, the cliff, and, and that, there goes all their money, right? So maybe he thought, you know what, if I am associated with Jesus, you know what, they're not going to let me in the company. So you know what, I'm going to stay back. You know, I, I really, you know, I fear them because they got the power to, to, to hire me. I tell people, if you're a believer, all right, and you, you believe Jesus should be first in your life, when it comes to employment and, and, and where you work, you know, you don't let that job interfere with your relationship with Christ. Right. Now I get it, people got... They got certain shifts. I get all that. Okay. But come on. Sometimes, hey man, we don't want to say no to the boss man in fear of them firing us. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's got to be something between you and God. Because I ain't going to pay your bills if you get fired. Because God knows your heart. Okay. But I've been there in that position where I had to come against my boss because he wanted, they were going to start a whole new shift in my company in Oxnard before I left to, to Larry. And there was going to be a swing shift. And they were going to put me on a swinger graveyard and maintenance. And, and when I heard about this, you know, since I was lower on the totem pole, I would be the one that had to, the, the day shift would go to the oldies, right? The veteran, and, pro, and I would have to take that one. And my boss told me about that, and I told him straight out, I said, look, you know what, with all due respect, I'm thankful that you hired me here. You know what, you gave me a chance, even though I was in the men's home, even though you know my past. You know what, you, you know, I'm so thankful. Like, I'm thankful to God, but I'm also thankful to you for giving me a chance, because he's the one that hired me. But you must understand, without God in my life, I'm going to be no good to you anyways. Yeah. All right? I'm going to be calling in. Yeah. And if I do come in, I'm going to be high. Mm. Come on. <laughs> and I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to be neglecting my duties. I'm going to rip you off. So more likely, it's probably better that, you know what, you just, this, 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 this set something up here. I'm not going to take any position besides the nation. It's going to interfere with my, with my, my ministry and my church, my relationship with God. Because in Oxnard, we had services three times a week. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Outreach, we're busy four or five times a week. I go, you know what? I'm not going the job getting away. You gave me this job, you give me another one. Okay. Now, I was like, you really speaking, that sounds crazy. Who would do that? Because I mean, oh, hey, you got, if you don't work, you don't eat. Okay. But, I don't forget. God's the one that gave me the, I just gave you the scripture. He's the one that gives us uh, the power for wealth. And, and what do you have learned? If you put him first, if you lose that job, guess what? He'll give you a better job. 
Okay? You might get a crazy inheritance from a long lost year that you didn't know about. And we all can be blessed. Or you're going to forget. You're going to vanish in thin air. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, I've heard, I have calls. Pastor, we're suing this company because they did this to me. You know what? I'm going to get a couple million. Remember, remember that one, Simon? Huh? We get two million, 20, 2.7. Huh? You know, I'm going to go, and I know what? Tell Pastor Shady, when, when I get it, I'm going to go to church and tie. Imagine. Tie for 2.2 2. 2 is like 270,000. I can finally get paid. Hallelujah. No, it's a joke. <laughs> well, we're still waiting. It's been about two, three years. I think he forgot. Mm -hmm. You know, that he lost his case because he lied to God. Because he wasn't going to do it. But that's a whole other sermon for a whole other day. He was fearful, I think, the second man, the demoniac, the second one. Like I said, I had never read about the second man because he vanished, get it? There's only one scripture, Matthew, that mentioned that there was two men. All this time I thought there was one. Did anybody else know that? I'm just curious. I, I didn't know those two men. After 20 some years, I read, wow. It just went over my head. Hmm? Or maybe he was fearful that Jesus would have him follow him. Come on. Maybe he thought, man, you know what? <laughs> you know, if I don't skip town now, this Jesus dude, he's going to have me follow him like his disciples. He's going to have me forsake all and follow him. Maybe, you know what, this is my calling to follow him. Right? He, maybe guys, let me know. There's a cost to pick up your cross and deny yourself and follow, and follow Jesus. There is a cost. Okay? The, the cost is your personal desires and ambitions will become secondary. Hello? And Jesus' calling and purpose of your life will become primary. It's not an easy one, trust me, I know. Because when God delivered me and saved me and the whole story, and He began to bless my life, and He began to, you know, bless my life, and then, but I knew that, that yeah, I had a calling. Let me tell you something, was like, man. <laughs> Man, I gotta leave all this. If you find said, okay, it's time to get up and go. It's time to leave, amen, your, your beach front house. Come on. It's time to uh, put your money where your mouth is. It's time to put your heart where you said your heart was. It's a cost. But I'll tell you what, the Bible is true when it says if you leave, if you leave last sake, if you leave family, mother, father, sons, and daughters for the kingdom's sake, you'll be blessed a hundredfold in heaven and in earth. And when I left Osnard, though I thought I was blessed over there, I am a hundred times blessed in this city. Okay? Now, and when I say that, I know you might be thinking materially, financially, in all areas. Still married? How many other blessings stay married? Okay, only one person thank you for being married. Okay. <laughs> Couples you missed your point say, yeah! <laughs> nah, too late. No, too late. No, I'm just kidding. Huh? He was fearful. Okay? Maybe he thought, you know what, man, I'm going to have to forsake all like a disciple. Huh? Maybe that's why he vanished into thin air. He was thankful and grateful that God did a, Christ did a mighty thing in his life. Huh? But you know what? Ah, you know, I got to get a job. I got to get a wife. Get a husband. You know what? You know, and then if you want to call me to ministry, you know what? Uh, people don't want to do it no more. They're, they vanished. Huh? God knows our hearts. He knows exactly why we do what we do. Trust me, I know. Maybe the demon possessed second one possessed man. Maybe he vanished into thin air and vanished without a trace because maybe his family and his friends began to affect him or going to affect him. Hello. Now that he was delivered, now that he was saved, now that he was out of jail, hey, you know, now I gotta spend time with my kids, my family, and all that, which is good, don't get me wrong, huh? But I may know, amen, it seems that there are sometimes family, amen, that didn't like the way you were, but all of a sudden you get cleaned up and you get better, all of a sudden, amen, oh, you know, but you know, they want you now. Christ wanted you when you were at your worst. They did it. Mm -hmm. Now we pledge allegiance to them. But you mess up, amen. Trust me, they'll go back to that same feeling. Yeah. Huh? You know, the Bible says, Jesus says, and maybe this is why he's, Jesus says, He, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, we know the scripture, He says, He who loves father or mother more than me 
is not worthy of me. Huh? And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That is a powerful scripture or accusation towards a person. When he says, is not worthy of me. You ever had your husband or wife tell you that? Man, you're not even worth it. <laughs> They're saying, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of my love and my commitment. All right? That I've given you. You're not worthy of that. No. I'm sure nobody's ever heard that. Hmm? Jesus is saying not to love your family. Come on, we know that. It's not what he meant. He's just saying, okay, you must love me supremely first. Let me tell you something. I love my family, and, I, and I'll do and have done just about anything for them. Okay? And I'm sure they're thankful. I'm blessed, and they get blessed. Okay? And think about it. Your, your, your family is blessed because you're saved. Right? They're blessed because of you. Now, if they're not, if they're not saved. If they're saved, then they're blessed too. But they must also understand that it's Jesus first. Hmm? We cannot allow our love for our parents, our children, or anyone else to be stronger than our love for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he says, if you love them more, you're not worthy of me. You cannot make it as a disciple of Christ. You cannot make it as one of my disciples. Because you'll be half-hearted, you'll be double-minded, amen. You'll have double allegiance, and your heart is not big enough to be have double allegiance. Okay. You can only serve Jesus. Said, you can only serve one master. Either love the one or hate the other. What? You cannot be on the fence. This is a choice you must make. Maybe those words affected this demon-possessed man, or was the one that did delivery. So you know what? You know what? Now that I'm good, now that I'm clean, you know what? Now I can be a parent, which we need to be parents. We need to be fathers and mothers now. I get all that. Okay, but we cannot forget the only reason we're able to do this now is because of him. Maybe he let his family and friends affect him. Maybe he was just concerned about his future. Because now he had plans to fulfill. Come on. He had things to do. He had places to go, people to see. Because remember, prior, he was in the tombs, shackled, naked, violent, all right, speaking to himself, full of demonic amen influences. Okay. But now that he's delivered, man, all right, I got a future now. But his future was all based on self. Oh, I've seen that so many times in the house of God where, you know what, people get come, they get delivered, they get saved. And I believe and I know genuinely in their hearts and they were sincere, all right, when they came to the altar and when they got saved and God began to bless. I believe, amen, their intentions were to serve Him. But the devil will come in and start speaking and you think it's God, but it's really the devil will slowly planting seeds into your ear, into your heart about the future that, you know what, and now you can do this, now you can do that. You know, you can do all these things. And you can do that with Christ also. But somehow, amen, you know, when we consider, you think about it. Well, you know what? This is going to get in my way of this, way of that. Come on. Now that he's in the right mind, now that he's in good standing, maybe he want to get back with his baby mom now. I don't know. Man, I can go back now and get my relationship restored. I'm worried about it. It's my future now. I'm in my right mind, amen. I'm off parole. I'm off probation. I got to get hanging over me. Maybe he was just, you know what? I got to get back with baby mom. Oh, I see this happen. Maybe now, amen. Now that they're looking good, they've been delivered, they've been changed, amen. They got money, they got a job. Oh, now they go, they go back to the club. They go back with his homies. Now that his mind's right, they can get back. They're in good standing. Hello? I don't know, but this man, amen. <laughs> Nobody knows. All this is simply assumption, what I'm talking about. But he did damage because in, that, in, in the book of Mark, it only says there was one there sitting in his right mind. The other one was gone. Maybe he went back to work, loved the money, and more importantly, the thing money could buy. I don't know. Something got in the way. You know what I'm talking about, huh? Maybe he started going back to the gym. Now that he was emotionally and spiritually right, now he wanted his physical appearance to match. 
Because you think about that. When you think you're right, you want everything to match in your life. You want physical appearance, you want to look good, you want to do things, you want to do that. And that's all good, don't get me wrong. But like I said earlier, not, amen, at the sake of losing our relationship and devotion to Christ. The one that got all this going. Oh, but we forget, amen. But we're living, amen, in a one room, one bedroom apartment in with 300 kids, amen, and 500 dope fiends there. It was a crack trap, amen, shooting out of your house. Anybody remember those days? Yeah, Don't let me remind you. <coughs> hmm? Or no house at all. Yeah. A lot of things get in the way of serving Christ. There's a lot of potential for them to get in the way. People get so involved in things of life that they don't have time for God. I think this man even have no more time for God. Hmm? Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine to what happened to this individual. He forgot what Jesus did for him. Maybe he was fearful. Uh, maybe he let his family and friends, his husband, his wife, I mean her husband, his wife. Well, nowadays it's kind of true, you know. <laughs> Okay, you don't know who's doing who. Hmm? Or maybe both. By curious. God knows, amen. But there's a lot of people forgetting God. Hmm? Maybe you're just concerned about the future. Maybe he's finally going to do what he's always wanted to do. You know what I'm talking about? The things you could not do on your own. But now God's giving you the power to do it. Now like, I'm going to do this now because I can never do it on my own. But now I got this. You no, know, God has delivered me and changed me. I can do this now. Because I'm going to know the Bible says that He knows the true intention of our hearts. Hmm? So this morning, man, as I bring it to a close, as I was reading this, it's just like, wow, this is a mighty revelation. And, and like I said, maybe you've caught it before. I never did. But I begin to think, man, it's so evident now in all churches in general where people are simply just forgetting about God. Mm -hmm. They're fearful of serving Him or fearful of the commitment that it requires. Yeah, it requires the cost. Jesus even said, you got to count the cost if you want to serve me. And if you're not ready to do that, you're not worthy of me. It doesn't mean he hates you. It doesn't mean that, you know what, he's going to shun you. It just seems that you're not you're not up to it. You can be. But you know what, as I bring to quote, what's ironic about this is that everything that you and I desire for our lives, the blessings, the favor, uh, just everything that we really, happiness, you can have all that still. Without the sin and the consequences of sin. Everything that, those things that I, I got them too. You know, restoration of family. God is still first in my life. If I want to go somewhere, I can go somewhere. Okay, I can, you go out of town, I can go out of town. The things that make you happy, you know, nice things, a nice car, maybe a house. I still can get those things without Going to hell over. See, you can have all these things because Jesus even said, you know, put me first, seek me first in my kingdom. All right? And you can have all these things. But we let the little devil whisper into our ear because when we whisper, he's a little devil. But then when, he, when the seed gets flattened and he becomes a big devil, we find ourselves in that left field. And then we find ourselves vanishing without a trace. We have to send an APB out. Hey, and I'll tell the sister, hey, can you see if you can find this individual? Go on their social media page. I don't have social media. Let's find out what they're up to. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Tell them to come back to church. We missed them. Hmm? And they often say the same thing. Well, you know, we've been sick. Only on Saturday and Sunday they're sick. Hmm? Oh, you know what? We had a death. People die all the time and they infect all of us. Well, you know, this this, this, this goes on and on. Praise God. Well, I'm glad even the church hasn't bad yet completely. Because there's still work to do in our city and in your life. This bar is this afternoon.